drive the school bus up there. Yeah, I think somewhere's in one of them books he put, you could set his clock. But bus, when I drove up there, it was always on time. Well, I'm my assuming. grandmother come from Chinook. Oh, really? Uh, Grandpa come from Missouri, Clarence, Missouri. And I was told he left for his health reasons, and I don't know just for sure hmm. what that meant. Hmm. Yeah, I think, I think it, somebody was after him. <laughs> well, that's what I didn't know, but I guess the humidity was so bad down there that he couldn't take it. And he come up. To, I don't know why he left that Chinook country and the Bear Paws to come down here to the Milk River and the mosquitoes. But I imagine that blue joint was probably up the horse's belly then. It was a pretty good country. And then he moved out there <coughs> to where he lived, out by the, where you go down to Vandalia Dam. There was a house off the side that was, that was where they lived. My dad was born there in 1910. And they used to go, they were building the dam then. And he'd go down and go under the dam and come up the other side and ride the, the train to school. Oh, really? Oh. I think it cost him 10 cents. Of course, 10 cents is quite a bit of money then. But, uh, <laughs> so that was the, when they were building the Vandalia Dam. Yeah. And he would get on to go to school. Did he go to Glasgow? He went to Hensdale. Well, that's a pretty, pretty short trip. Well, did it, and it stopped. It, did it, it stopped at Vandalia there and and stopped in Hinsel. He didn't have to jump off or anything. No, it was <laughs> a local little thing that run back and forth. I rode it to the tournament one time because oh. when I was a freshman, I never made the I made the team as an alternate. But I had a place to stay down there, and my cousin Russell Betts he didn't. So I said, "Well, take him, and I'll I'll just." go down. Well, they didn't have any buses at the time. So they went down in cars and cars and scoop shovels. And this was where? <laughs> the tournament was where? Glasgow, in the Glasgow. Civic Center. So they had to stop and shovel their way through the snow banks to get to, to town. And I rode the little little train. That would be kind of handy, really. Some, was, I think yeah. of that sometimes now. It'd really be handy sometimes yeah. if the train still stopped in Hensdale. <laughs> Yeah, it was a handy little thing for kids to go to school. Never had any school buses. Dad started the first school bus here. Oh, really? And what what was your dad's name? Edward. Edward. It was a Ford pickup with a plywood box on the back and a heater you used blankets. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> kids all just hop in the back of the pickup and had yeah. some benches back there, I suppose. Well, then they got a real bus, but, but we never had a bus to go to the ball games or anything. We had to take cars. And one of them that called us five seniors, his boys was Roy Hillman. He was the banker at the time. And I ended up being the driver all the time when I was a senior. <laughs> we come. I guess was back from the state tournament, and I wasn't used to that kind of a vehicle that really liked to go. And I almost missed a corner, and I looked down, and I was doing 80 or 85 oh, at that time. Oh boy! That was those, a little fast for <laughs> those little cars weren't really designed to go that fast, were they? <laughs> well, this is a big old Oldsmobile. And it would go. So where was that state tournament? Conrad. Not a very good tournament, Tom. It wasn't a very good tournament? Well, it didn't turn out too good for us. But Is that a dog out there? Yeah, he just yeah. scratched tied up. Oh, tied up? But yeah. we won the district that year, but they changed things around. They put Opheim went east, Nashville went to B, oh. and oh, wow. Glasgow was A, and Hinsdale was C, and there was Three teams from Valley County went to state tournament that year. Oh, wow. We were the first one from Hensdale. And then they put <coughs> Hope, no, Turner, Hayes Mission, mm -hmm. and I 
think Harlem in our district. Hmm. And when you went up to Turner to play, you, if you didn't hit the ceiling, you'd stand under one basket and shoot into the other one. <laughs> <laughs> and if the ball got loose on the floor, well, you'd think it was a football game because there's ten guys on top of it. <laughs> Couple guys in bib overalls were the referees, and we got down to Malta playing the the district tournament. I was out in front of the guard, and this guy run up and give me the knee right where it hurts, and then took off running. And I I caught him just before he went into the locker room on the other end of the floor, explaining to him that that's not the proper way to play the game. <laughs> I let him up and everybody else was down to the end playing. I don't think they even missed us. <laughs> but he stayed a long ways away from me after that. <laughs> so did you have a divisional tournament then after that and then you went yeah, to Yeah, that was in Glasgow at the Well that's pretty nice. You didn't have to travel too much until no. you went to state. How many how many teams were there in your district then? Oh, I don't know. I, I got a scrapbook full of stuff. Turner go. Turner but Turner and Hayes were yeah. In the district. I don't know if Hoagland was mixed in that with him. Maybe it was with Turner, I don't remember. So who all, who all was on your team that year, do you remember? Yeah. That was Jack Jensen. It was five seniors. They looked like that. Probably the only one you know is Jack Jensen. Boucher. This is Jack here, isn't it? Yeah. Huh? Oh, Dennis. Yeah. I didn't realize Dennis was on that team. A little smaller. So this is Jack here, right? <laughs> yeah. That's me, and that's Russell Bits, and Arden Bits, and Frank Powell, and, and uh, uh, I know who he is, Jim Matfield. Oh. Dale Shotnikoff, Roger Drabs, Bud Reagan. There's only two of us. Only yeah, two of you left, just you and Dennis, huh? Two seniors left. Mm. This one and this oh, one. Oh, okay. Shot, Shotnikoff, is that what you said his name is? Dale Shotnikoff over here, yeah. That was the first year they they come in with the challenge game. Oh. So we were down and we were third place, but we hadn't played Bainville yet. So we challenged them. Well, at that time, the, whoever you challenged got their choice of the, where they wanted to play the game. Oh, they really? could play in their own home. Did gym you have to go to Bainville? To. So we didn't want to go up to their gym and play in their home team, so we told them that. You can have that second place trophy. We just want to go to the state tournament. So we challenged them and we beat them and went to the state tournament. And that turned out to be a disaster. Poplar was in our, he wasn't in our district, but. It was Class C at that time? Yeah. And they had 10 guys. You could run them in, five in and five out, and you Ooh. couldn't tell the difference. Ooh. Yeah. They did. We got down to the state tournament down there, and Jack, he was 6'5". He could lift the guy off off the floor on his arms when he went to shoot, and they wouldn't call a foul. Really? He, he had four fouls on him, and he went down and he stood just like this. And a guy run by him, and they called a foul on Jack. Wow. One of the guys was Oscar Prestigo from Chinook. And we thought he was him and Eddie Swanson and Carl Falgren was the, the best rest. referees. And so we were glad to have Oscar up there, but he turned out to be just the same as the rest of them. Mm -hmm. And after each, we played two games. And after each game, some little short guy carrying a briefcase come down out of the stands and shook my hands and said, played a good game, it's the referees that beat you. Well, it was. Harmon Tuttle, he was a publishers of our famous Enfield Tribune. Mm -hmm. Well, he heard A.O. Hefty and Rex Daly talking about how 
Belfry should win that tournament, be this how they won it last year. And Harmon said, if that's the guy's way you guys are operating, give me my money back, I'm going home. If it's already decided before it yeah. starts, there's no point in watching it. We didn't have the best team there, but this, we knew Poplar could beat us. They'd beat us all year long. But. Well, especially if they're not going to call anything. Did you, you really get Did you get to play another game, or was it just, just that one game? Two games. So who else did you play? I don't remember now. I don't think it was Twin Bridges, but I understand. I couldn't. I couldn't tell you who we played at state, except for the team that we beat to win the championship. <laughs> <laughs> It's a lot easier to remember when it <laughs> when it turns out good and gets you a championship. Yeah, that was that's been a long time ago. So driving the driving the bus for the basketball team got you interested in driving the bus, evidently, huh? No, I didn't drive the bus. Well, all we had was cars back in then. Right, not to the basketball games, but you drove bus later, right? Oh, yeah. No, the reason I did that is because I didn't have any money. <laughs> That's a pretty good reason. <laughs> and I was married. <laughs> so how many years did you drive bus? I think seven. What route What route did you take? All of them, but most of the one was north. Oh, you got to do the more north country. So you got to pick up, pick up the Eaton boys, did you? Eaton boys and the Macaulays and the Swansons and and he had a of course Jim he would had ants in his pants and never sat down. Hmm, imagine that. And I kept after him to find the seat he liked and sat down, but he was always up bouncing around and yeah. Frank Nelson, huh? Oh, Jim Macaulay. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Frank Nelson kinda run his cows on the road. In the long pasture? <laughs> yeah. I was watching them. And, but one come out of the bar pit in front of me, I wasn't going very fast, and I hit the brakes, and here comes Jim rolling down the aisle <laughs> up under the dash. I said, you get hurt? He said, no. I said, now you see I, why I want you to sit down? He said, yeah. So he sat down all the way home. But the next day it was the same day. <laughs> yeah, and I had to. Cameroon girls and this couple of Swanson girls and they'd all get the giggles. There was nothing you could do about that except drive a little faster <laughs> than all. I told one of the Eatons, I don't know whether it was Mike or Doc, a few years ago, I said, you know, good thing you guys is good natured because I was a little tough on you when I was driving the bus because I'd pick them up and sit on. You can't do that now. I bet they were were better mannered than some. <laughs> yeah, probably are. But yeah, they grew up pretty big. Oh, it wasn't bad. The only bad part about it was that they bought an old school bus that was already wore out the first year. So you got to be a mechanic too? No, <laughs> but you hit a little puddle of water on the road and it'd splash up and get things wet and it wouldn't run. So he had to stop, mm -hmm. take the distributor off and dry it out and go on again. And sometimes you had one brake and sometimes you didn't have any. Oh, geez. With the brake line run right across where the rocks would fly up and then they'd flat, flatten the brake line or break it or something. And we did. That's before they built the new bridge across the Milk River. Mm -hmm. You had a sharp turn to make. Well, I was trying to be careful most of the time because you never knew when he was going to have any brakes or not. Well, I come through there one time and stepped on the brake and I didn't have any, but there happened to be an approach right on the other side of the curve and the gate was open and that's why I drove out in there and turned around and come back. Well, I was north of Macaulay's on that cut across road Everything that was on the inside of the motor was tried to get out. Mm -hmm. So there I sat. Well, they had them old tube type radios and they couldn't call anybody. And you're not supposed to leave them kids on the bus, but I thought, geez, how long am I going to have to sit here before somebody comes along? And so I got out and started walking, and Johnny Mogan picked me up. And I was saying, 
bad things about the people that bought that <laughs> wore out bus. <laughs> he happened to be on the school bus. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess you, you told somebody that it made a difference to, huh? Yeah, I guess. But. Oh, that's funny. They got one bus when I was, I must have been, a, I don't know, junior or senior. They bought an old, well, I don't know what it was because it had velvet padded seats on it. It might have been a, I don't know, was a tour bus or what it was, but they bought it for the to run this route out this way. And you could hit them cushions like that, and that dust would just fly out of them. <laughs> but they never took it to any games or anything. But and then I started driving this route out here once in a while, and. You were supposed to go to the last family on the route. So, which didn't make sense to me, but that's the family at the end of the route was supposed to bring your kids back here. And I started driving and you wouldn't, couldn't go in to take the kids. But over here, at, below the hill at Ziggers, you stopped there because there was a Little Daryl Betts had some stepkids there. And then you got to back out into the highway Ooh. below that hill. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't do it. I just drove into the yard and turned around and drove into Betts's and turned around. And then pretty soon everybody was doing that. Yeah, that was a heck of a lot safer. I bet the kids appreciated it too. That's a pretty long oh, yeah. walk either way. <laughs> I had a little trouble with Andy Hillerson's bunch down there them I'd pull up there and here they'd just come around the corner walking up to the bus. I'd have sat on the highway and wait for them. I finally just got so I'd leave them. <laughs> they, they got more prompt then. Because as soon as you wait 10 minutes for somebody, your schedule is shot for the rest of the trip. I got nothing on that one. I'm sure my bus driver complained about me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't you get there on time? Yeah, no, we were never on time. <laughs> he, he did actually leave us a couple of times, yeah. We had to chase I him probably would have too. Did mom and dad have to take you? Yep, that didn't go over very well. <laughs> yeah. So, dad has, or Mark has some good stories about um, kids doing kind of crazy things in the school. You got any good stories like that? Did you ever pick on your teachers at all? Well, we never done any crazy things in the school. We was always good boys because my dad said if you get a licking in school you're going to get one twice as hard when you get home. <laughs> and his ordinary lickings were good enough, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I actually talked to Teddy a little bit before we came out here and she said you might have a good story about something about a teacher and a window. You know, I was home that day. <laughs> <laughs> I really was, <laughs> but I did get blamed for it. <laughs> so what's the story? Well, it was, it was Jack Jensen and Dorothy Jones and Russell Betts. This was in the old schoolhouse, you know, in the Two upstairs story. window. Mm -hmm. We had three bookkeeping teachers out here. I was a senior. and. This guy was, uh, maybe you run across him in years, he just turned out to be the Tupperware man out of Fort Peck. Oh, really? What was his name? Payton. Oh, yeah. But he was a little bit of a sissified type, nice enough guy, all right. <laughs> but now, somebody the kids would find pretty easy to pick on, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> well, they, they didn't have him all the way out the window, they just had him up on the ledge. There, kind of threatening, but he come in with a Tupperware party one day and walks in the house here and seen me and he eyes got big and <laughs> he looked at the windows I suppose. <laughs> yeah, we had three bookkeeping teachers that year. There was Mr. Payton and Alfreda and Alfreda Drabs. In fact, the matter is, I asked her if she wanted to finish my report card because she left out one side of my A. 
That was a big typo, huh? Yeah, but she wouldn't do it. <laughs> this other teacher, I can't think of what the heck his name was. He didn't like the girls. He picked on the girls and he picked on Russell Betts quite a bit too. But every time we won a basketball game, he gave us an A. Oh, really? We won quite a few games. In <laughs> wow. The year. So I passed bookkeeping. <laughs> but you know, he wasn't much of a teacher because. Yeah. I don't do much bookkeeping now, but yeah, I was gone that day. I was, I was home, otherwise I'd have got blamed for it. <laughs> Almost got the paddle once, but they broke it on Donnie Christensen. <laughs> <laughs> and we didn't do nothing bad. Somebody had been throwing snowballs at the girls, and we'd come walking from uptown and there was loose snow now, and we just reached down and took a handful and scooped it at them. And, Bob Herman, the principal, has seen us. He called us in the office and kind of whack us with that paddle, but they broke it on Donnie, so I missed out on it. <laughs> that was definitely a different time if they had a paddle in the office. Yeah, they did. You were yeah. there with the paddle, did you say? No, he oh. said that was a different time if there was a paddle. <laughs> oh, no. 